normal foreheads? Real yeah. life actors? Among Us? What's going on here? This is Code Lyoko Evolution, a sequel series destined for failure. Why is that? Let's rewind a bit. The mid 2000s were a wild time for animation. Code Lyoko stood out by doing a 2D slash 3D action hybrid. It was cool, clever, and a certified classic. A while back, I did a retrospective on Code Lyoko. I made a solemn oath. If that video surpassed 2,000 likes, I would cover the Revival series. That threshold surpassed my expectations, yet things haven't felt the same. Code Lyoko Evolution is a 2012 action drama that combines CGI with live action. Yuck! The Lyoko warriors return to their pre-Xana school routine until they receive terrible news. Their former enemy is back and ready to destroy humanity once again. The team hinders Xana's return but learns he's hiding inside a mysterious Linux server. But that's not all. There's another faction working against Team Lyoko. Can the gang fend off both threats at once? Eh, not really. Code Lyoko Evolution is full of wasted potential. It offers some fresh ideas and vastly improved 3D animation. On the flip side, the writing is frustratingly fickle. Most baffling of all, the live action scenes aren't good with nothing to make up for it. What happened? I'm ready to dissect this digital disaster. Covering failed TV shows way past their prime is kind of my thing. Before we continue, this video is a sequel to my original Code Lyoko review. I recommend you see that first. Also, big spoiler warning for Evolution. Not that anyone would care. It's time to virtualize the Code Lyoko Evolution review. Showtime. We pick up one year after the original series. Team Lyoko resumes life at Kadic Academy. During computer class, the school's equipment goes haywire. Somehow, Xana returned. The Lyoko warriors turn on the Lyoko supercomputer, but realize it went through a system update. Freaking Windows, am I right? Odd and I lead a teleport to Sector 5 and investigate Xana's reawakening. Instead, they find better animation. Evolution throws in huge stylistic changes off the bat. Why did they ditch hand-drawn animation for poorly shot live action? I'll save this visual whiplash for later. For now, let's gush over Evolution's biggest saving grace, the vastly improved CGI. The character models took a massive leap forward. Their facial animation is way smoother and their season 4 outfits are sharper than ever. Time has not been kind to the original show's flat environments. This evolution in visual fidelity lives up to the sequel's namesake. My only nitpick is the Tron Legacy makeover for the towers. They're made out of black rectangles, which are less memorable than the original cylindrical design. Even 10 years later, this 3D art style holds up. Odd and Ailita discover an activated tower. Xana sends a gym specter to hunt Ulrich and Yumi. What's Xana's grand scheme? Hugging the warriors and draining their life force. No, really, it's a regular slow motion hug. Ailita disables the attack and the specter turns into After Effects dust. The team reconvenes at the factory. Firstly, while Lyoko was turned off, it lost the data for the ice and forest sectors. They're gone. Secondly, before Xana died, he installed his source code inside the four warriors, except for William. Why he didn't use GitHub is beyond me. Xana needs to retrieve his source code in order to reach his full power. With this data, Odd, Yumi, and Ura can also deactivate Xana's towers. Ailita is no longer a mandatory escort mission. This is a fine shakeup, I guess. It lowers the stakes, but that's the least of our problems. Jeremy pinpoints Xana's new home base, the Cortex. The Cortex is a floating maze of death. It's a duplicate of Lyoko's operating system, but hosted on an offshore Linux server. It changes its layout every few hours, but there's no pause button. The design for this zone is super dope. It's a metallic sky fortress filled with oppressive architecture. It's Sector 5 on steroids, and I love it. Team Lyoko docks by the sky fortress. William, the hot-headed warrior, tries to hop in, but the team denies his chance. In the old days, William was Lyoko's newest recruit, but Xana swiftly possessed him. It took months to break him free from Xana's influence. The gang explores the Cortex maze, but the RNG rolls against their favor. William jumps into the fray and covers Ailita's tail. Game over. Ailita hacks into the Cortex terminal. Her father, Franz Hopper, is connected to this deadly maze. Outside, Odd tackles William for locking him inside a school freezer. Don't ask. They quickly make up and help Ailita escape the security lockdown. 
Despite William saving the team, Jeremy and the others dismiss his presence. They stay on alert for Xana's attacks and his code stuck in Spectres. Evolution then transitions to the Attack of the Week format with the occasional plot heavy episode. We just covered the first two episodes and it's off to a bad start. The writing is generally weak, Xana's schemes are underwhelming, and the real life acting is stilted. Let's get the most controversial aspect out of the way. Evolution's most divisive change is swapping the 2D hand-drawn portion with real-life footage. It's as bad as you expect. These scenes are filled with robotic direction, lifeless camera work, and stiff acting. I don't blame the six lead actors. They did their best given the dull writing. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm judging this show by its English sub. Evolution has an official English dub, but I ditched it for several reasons. 1. The OG dub actors weren't included. What gives? 2. The clips I found had robotic delivery. A text-to-speech program has more charisma. Jeremy, how many monsters do you see on your screens? Uh, three. Jeremy, tu peux me dire combien t'as de monstres sur tes écrans? Trois. And three, there are no HD copies of this dub available on the official YouTube page. For our purposes, I'll stick to the original French version and play subtitles when necessary. How well does Evolution's characters compare to the original show? Let's start with our six main characters. Jeremy Belbot is a brilliant computer student with self-confidence issues. He's a communications officer and team leader. His virtual girlfriend is Ailita. Ailita Schaefer is a loyal and empathetic individual. In the Vintage series, her father Fran Topper worked on a secret military project. France designed Xana as part of his weapon, but Xana quickly turned against his creator. Where Ailita's mother went is never resolved. In Evolution though, Ailita uncovers evidence that her mother's alive. Excited, she rallies the team to dig deeper. Ailita is the field commander and heart of the team. However, Evolution cranks her jealousy up to 11. Not even her best friend was this petty. Yumi Ishiyama is a calm gymnast who's also proficient with projectile weapons. In addition to her signature fans, she gets a new bow staff. But, she neglects her telekinesis. Back in Season 4, she and Ulra hinted at being a couple, but in Evolution, they're back to being good friends. I'm disappointed they don't go any further. Ulrich Stern is a cocky yet headstrong swordfighter. He has super sprint and cloning abilities, which he rarely uses. He's sensitive to what others think of him, particularly Yumi and William, but he gets along with his roommate Odd. Odd Della Robia is an extroverted class clown and a great sharpshooter. In the original show, he shot single burst laser arrows from his wrist. In Evolution, he goes full auto. He tries getting a date with his classmate Sam, but bad luck hampers his chances. His wingman William is here to help. William Dunbar is a down-to-earth guy with hot-headed tendencies. He has a crush on Yumi, but respects your boundaries. On Lyoko, he sports a giant sword. His special ability is Super Smoke, which allows for quick travel like in Splatoon. In the classic series, he joins Team Lyoko for 15 minutes. He then gets akumatized for months, eventually freed, and then rejected by his peers in the finale. William was on track to redemption, but the original series left him dirty. In Evolution, he gets proper character growth. The gang is reluctant to reinstate his warrior status. He was a brutal enforcer under Xana's grip, but quickly proves he's good place material. He puts aside his disagreements and cooperates with his peers. He earns his spot as a Lyoko warrior. Evolution gives William the respect he deserves. He has fewer arguments with Ulrich and puts the gang's needs above his own. My favorite scenes involve him vibing with Ulrich and Odd. At some point, he gives Odd relevant dating advice. Pas possible. Je pensais vraiment pouvoir retrouver Sam plus rapidement. Tu sais, je crois pas aux causes perdues d'avance. Écoute moi, Odd. Tant qu'il y a de l'espoir, il faut s'accrocher. He is the best character by default. Non mais j'y crois pas. Jim qui fait du tai chi. <laughs> okay, second best character. The gang attends Cadet Academy, a private junior high school. Kadik was special due to all the eccentric side characters. Evolution either minimizes their presence or omits them entirely. I'm not saying the original series had a deep and complex cast, but the quirky side characters breathed so much charm into the show. Sissy and her classmates were amazing foils to our Lyoko underdogs. Evolution replaces their personality with nothing. You could replace these guys with actual plants and not much would change. The only side character who remains unscathed is the physical ed teacher. Jim Morales is a self-aggrandized coach with a heart of gold. He provides a fun antidote to the monotony 
Jim was pure joy in his 2D days, and his live-action portrayal preserves his endearing antics. Unfortunately, he'd rather not talk about it. J'ai pas fermé l'œil de la nuit à cause d'une souris ou d'une mangouze. Bref. I'd rather not talk about it. Team Lyoko resumes their main quest, but a transfer student catches Jamie's attention. That person is Laura Gautier, a smart girl obsessed with quantum computing. Laura is great at programming, but her arrogance level is even higher. Jamie develops feelings for Laura the minute he lays eyes on her. You know, like a nerd. Laura questions Jamie about his group's off-campus activities, but Ailita shuns her, not willing to take the L. Laura stalks the game to the factory. Jamie is startled, but Laura geeks over his elite gaming rig. The other warriors don't take her kindly. Without hesitation, Alita launches a return to the past. Damn, she is jealous. Laura becomes an unlikely ally to Team Lyoko. The warriors believe she's a liability, but Jamie's blind simping results in dire consequences. He briefly invites her to help write a complex anti-cortex virus. He then does the time warp, but she retains her memories. She added herself to the return to the past exception list. She did this right in front of him. What? And the worst part? He can't remove her from the list. The team is officially stuck with her. Oh, and the virus she finished didn't work. But Laura is happy to tinker with his rig. I have mixed feelings on Laura's inclusion. Her main purpose is causing friction within Team Lyoko. She rivals Jamie and Ailita in intelligence. However, she rejects their wait and see strategies in tackling Xana. Laura is self-conscious in appeasing her strict father. When she faces extreme pressure, she chickens out. Laura being a wild card is a good idea. In theory. In execution, not so much. Okay, let me get this straight. Jamie and Ailita spent months of their lives perfecting many Lyoko programs. But Laura, who tinkered with Lyoko's OS for the first time, rom hacks the time warp with no issue. But she can't spawn a simple land vehicle. Her skill level depends on the mood of the rider that day. The gang resumes Operation Cortex. They dock by the maze's outer rim and use Jamie's newest vehicle, the Megapod. It's underwhelming from a design standpoint. It's a yellow chassis with a giant cockpit in the middle. It can scale walls with no problem, but it has a pea shooter of a turret. It's functional, but not very exciting. Also, why don't they dock the skid right next to the center dome? Better yet, couldn't they fly over the death maze? This wouldn't be such a deal breaker, but there's no good answer other than we need to sell more toys. Heck. You could have just placed defense drones all over the maze and bam, no fly zone. Evolution has more important things to do than worry about internal consistency. The team enables the Nord VPN extension and sneaks into the dome. The dome's interior design is kinda rad. It's a bunch of floating platforms circling the central heart. It reminds me of the startup screen of the original Xbox. They meet Lowell Tyron, a mad scientist responsible for the Cortex. He used to work with Franz Hopper back in the day, but both of them had a falling out. Tyron stole Hopper's research and created his own supercomputer. His goal is to overclock his Linux machine and achieve ultimate power. The gang warns Tyron of Xana living on his computer rent-free, but he denies their claims. He's like, You guys were trespassing on my property. You guys are sus. He demands they log off his server, or suffer the consequences. A group of cyber samurais jump out of the shadows and pulverize the warriors. These guys are ninjas, aka Tyron's elite task force. They have the ability to slide through solid matter, and sometimes vents. The ninja design is a fusion between the Among Us astronaut and upgrade from Ben 10. I know this show predates Among Us, but that comparison is forever etched into my mind. Tyron is a generic mad scientist who conducts shady experiments for his own end. Other than trapping the gang inside a temporary time bubble, he's passive 90% of the time. Tyron doesn't do much. His Among Us ninjas might be cool, but they're not enough to redeem their non-threatening boss. The warriors almost give up. My favorite episode is A Time to Fight. Ulrich drops out of a Cortex raid due to his commitment to a school karate tournament. The team fights the ninjas, but their standard attacks aren't cutting it. Ulrich especially struggles against his opponent. That's when Jim swoops in to save the day and suggests that Ulrich switches up his attack patterns. Ulrich catches his opponent off guard and earns a trophy for Kadic. Ulrich heads to the factory and gets a revelation. The ninjas are not machines. They're motion capture rigs controlled by Tyron's henchmen. He tells the warriors to act unpredictable. Yumi and William improvise their tactics and outsmart the ninjas. At the end, Ulrich delivers his trophy to Jim as a token of gratitude. This episode is good for a few reasons. 
It expands Jim's duality of tough love coach and goofy couch potato. He imparts actual wisdom to Ulrich, and their exchanges are genuinely wholesome. The unpredictable strategy has a neat setup and payoff. If only the fight choreography was this consistently good. Code Lyoko is known for its intricate fight scenes. Not every fight was a banger, but the studio did a good job spicing things up. They had fast vehicles, versatile monsters, and five distinct biomes. The warriors used their abilities quite often, and Xana always had an ace up his sleeve. Evolution has almost none of that charm. The combat in Evolution is limited and far less creative. Team Lyoko is nerfed to a ridiculous degree. In the classic series, the warriors pulled their weight. In Evolution, they arbitrarily die in one hit. Many of their knockouts are preventable rookie mistakes. You could chalk this up to the kids getting rusty, but no, they aren't nearly as creative with their tactics. Yumi forgets her telekinesis, Ulrich rarely uses a super sprint, and William ignores his smoke ability even when the situation calls for it. Their special powers are barely put to the test. That significantly cuts down the variety in combat. I'm not saying Evolution needed to rehash the older style of spectacle, but at the very least, make the action scenes enjoyable. Evolution's choreography lacks that shonen anime inspiration. In turn, the actual staging is far too basic and vanilla. For God's sake, the season 1 fights were more imaginative with their setups. The cinematography was also far more dynamic. To Evolution's credit, the action scenes incorporate a few fresh ideas. These would be the imposter clones, Laura cracking Xana's prime number plan, or overcoming the ninjas. The best variety is brought through the maze RNG scenes. The Megapod runs over several enemies, slides on walls, and even makes tight turns. But for most fight scenes, the warriors either lack good squad tactics or basic competence. Another downgrade is the audio design. The original series had spotty audio mixing and repetitive music tracks, but you couldn't deny that it was unique. The tower scenes had ethereal wailing and little clicks when Ailita entered. I appreciate all the little technical flourishes. Evolution contains better audio mixing, but the sound design is far less distinct. The music is synth flavor with occasional drum and bass. The ambience for the digital world is less pronounced, and the tower entrance noises are almost non-existent. Even the title theme is lame. It's not nearly as catchy or memorable as the original theme song, but not as weak as Aelita's mom subplot. Aelita dreams about her mom. She decides enough is enough and does research on her own. She enables Atlas VPN and cracks some intel. Anthea Schaefer works at Tyron's lab. Aelita tries contacting her, but Anthea closes the call due to immense shock. A long time ago, Hopper abandoned his shady work with the government. He and Aelita eluded the French CIA, but Anthea was taken into custody. To be honest, I'm apathetic to the fate of Aelita's mom. It's great we're getting some closure, but I have little reason to care. In Evolution's case, she's a hollow plot device. Anthea misses her daughter and acts confused all the time. She doesn't have much character. As Aelita departs, a ninja latches onto the skid and plants a homing beacon in Sector 5. Tyron pinpoints Kadic as the gang's HQ. He sends an agent to investigate the student body. Jeremy dodges the questions, but Laura succumbs to the pressure. Play dumb! Not that dumb! Laura receives Tyron's business card, but Team Lyoko discards the beacon and launches a return to the past. The next day, Laura somehow retains the business card. Because foreshadowing. Ooh. A few episodes later, Xana sucks up more of the team's source codes. There's no beating around the bush. Xana's real world schemes are a real disappointment. Firstly, the Spectres themselves are largely unimpressive. They can phase through solid walls, sometimes, but all they do is walk, hug a warrior, and occasionally throw lightning bolts. They're only effective when the script demands it. Granted, Xana doesn't want to destroy the warriors as he needs their source code, but still, you'd think he'd be more discreet. Secondly, the Spectre chase scenes have the worst editing on the show. Evolution will use split screen elements or sudden jump cuts without warning. Some of the jump cuts are just baffling, like what were they thinking? 
The editing is amateur's paradise. My favorite part is the over-reliance on slowing down the footage. To add more tension, the footage will crawl to 8 frames per second. That's not threatening, yet so hilarious. The team continues the mother's side quest until Xana reaches 95% power. He sits at 90% efficiency. Laura grows furious over Jeremy putting their main quest on hold. She argues that humanity is on the line and Aelita's mom isn't as important. For once, I agree with her. Meanwhile, Yumi declines William's book club. William goes into sad mode and reconsiders his team loyalty. In a previous episode, Xana sends out a William imposter and seduces the real William to the dark side. Xana appeals to his insecurities, saying, You're a pawn for the good guys. They never treated you like an equal. William almost gives in, but Yumi pulls him to the light side. It's one of the better scenes from this revival. As the gang attends a mandatory school marathon, Laura convinces William to prove his worth and join her secret Xana endgame mission. William makes it to the Cortex, but Xana ambushes him. Worst of all, Laura can't spawn the Megapod. Okay, she's smart enough to code a working Linux virus, but can't spawn a simple Land Rover. Xana akumatizes William. Gamer, I am Hawkmoth. I'll help you win the tournament of your life. But in return, you must help me achieve my high score. Absolutely, Hawkmoth. Game on! Laura alerts the team of her predicament. Ulrich and Yumi de evilize William and accept his apology. Furious, Jamie officially kicks Laura off the team. She's like, You can't do that. I've got military encryption from ExpressVPN. And he's like, I found an exploit in the Time Warp program. Laura, prepare for a memory wipe. One time warp later, Laura has no recollection of Lyoko. This was a really great moment. It was so satisfying seeing an arrogant snitch lose so badly. Unfortunately, she still retains Tyron's phone number. Xana achieves 95% power. In the final mission, Team Lyoko prepares their anti Xana DRM. Laura opens a Discord call with Tyron. He shows her 3D images of the Lyoko warriors. She unknowingly confirms his hunch. Then, Aelita is summoned to the principal's office and meets Tyron face to face. Tyron reveals he married Anthea, making him Aelita's legal stepfather. How does this work if Aelita forged her identity in the original series? No time for that. He makes an offer. Aelita betrays Team Lyoko and gets answers for her mom's whereabouts. If she declines, Tyron can legally transfer her out of Caddick. He gives Aelita his wife's locket and she speedruns to the factory. Tyron tracks the GPS signal, but finds Yumi in the forest. The classic bait and switch. Tyron and his cronies hold Yumi hostage. Back on the Cortex, the warriors install the anti xana virus. It works, but Tyron orders his minions to unplug his Linux server. By shutting down his computer, Tyron buys some time to dismantle the virus. The warriors barely escape the falling RNG maze. Tyron releases Yumi and triumphantly exits the school grounds. Aelita laments missing her chance to see her mom again. The team vows to find Anthea and defeat Tyron once and for all. Moreover, Xana remains trapped inside Tyron's hard drive. Did the virus work in time? We'll never know. Jimmy suspects that Xana will stop at nothing to destroy Lyoko again. The season ends with Jimmy putting his supercomputer on hibernate mode. This cliffhanger leaves a lot to be desired. It's story revelation galore, but there's little reason to care. and doesn't leave me wanting more. However, Team Lyoko is conquered by their greatest threat yet. Cancellation. Why did it fail? Studio Meddling. Moonscoop is a studio behind the Koleoko franchise. In the early 2010s, the company was hemorrhaging money. The studio's one and only mega hit was Koleoko. It was a no brainer they'd make a follow up. When Moonscoop announced that Evolution was half live action, my excitement dipped below the digital sea. Why did they go this route? Money. Animation eats up time and resources. Switching the 2D scenes to live action is cheaper and much faster to produce. This speaks to a more fundamental issue. Going the live action route was a fundamentally terrible idea from the start. The 2003 series was great due to its harmony of 2D and 3D animation. The show pushed the envelope in both mediums, and it didn't shy away from constant peril or deeper emotional connection. Evolution desecrates the fantastical charm of its predecessor. It lacks the passion or willingness to rise above its limitations. The real-life segments are rushed, poorly constructed, and lack any kind of polish. 
This disregard for good storytelling also affects the 3D scenes, which fail to live up to their full potential. The whole package is damaged beyond repair. Moon Scoop was desperate for a hit. Instead of taking the time to refine their 2D and 3D animation, they took an awkward half step. In 2014, a year after the show was canned, Moon Scoop filed for bankruptcy. Where does that leave Evolution's legacy in 2022? In conclusion, Code Lyoko Evolution is a bad series that fails to live up to its predecessor. It did a great job improving the 3D presentation and respecting William's redemption arc. William, is que t'as déjà embrassé Yumi? Uh, Joker. Jim Morales is S tier comic relief, and the Cortex scenes offer a few decent set pieces, but I can't overlook the live action segments. The direction is dull, the writing is flat, and the lack of polish is on full display. Tyron comes across as a passive nuisance, and the Find Aelita's Mom side quest left me unimpressed. The 3D fight choreography is more restrictive than inventive. Unless you're a completionist like yours truly, I don't recommend Kolioko Evolution. It's a frustrating experience. I would like to thank all the viewers who supported this passion project. You guys might have forced me to watch this disaster, but I had a blast writing this script. And remember, no foreheads were harmed in the making of this video.